All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chaz Scarantino. I am the managing director uh, for Pendo here in EMEA out of our, our London office. So thanks everyone for joining us for this webinar on digital business continuity. Uh, the idea for this webinar really came through the uh, interesting times that we're all going through right now um, with kind of the changing environment. And we realized that we were experiencing these things ourselves uh, and helping our own customers through them. And we decided to uh, build a series around uh, talking about what we're seeing and some best practices um, and sharing those with the community. So, you know, right now we are, we are experiencing unprecedented change in the sense that um, whole companies are going to a work from home environment. Um, we're seeing new ways of having to work with our customers because of this. Um, some things that might have been done in person previously are now uh, being done virtually, as well as some of our applications have dramatically changed in our, our behavioral patterns. Some of them have seen lower usage um, and some of them have seen exponential usage as products and applications have uh, gone from a nice to have to a must have in certain environments. Um, so today we have an all-star cast uh, here for you guys to talk through um, different tips and tricks. Uh, from Pendo, we have Courtney Laracy. She uh, is our senior customer success manager, as well as John Barber, who uh, is our senior sales engineer uh, for the technical side of the product. Um, but then as well, we have some of our customers. Um, we have two representatives from Firefly Learning. Um, you may have seen them represented in the news recently on, on the amount of uh, usage and success their product is having within this current environment, helping the ed tech community. Um, so from them, we, were we will have uh, Lars Dryland presenting as well as Sam Benson. So very excited to, um, to get started today. We're gonna follow uh, this general uh, outline. So first we're gonna talk about just tips and tricks, um, responding to these rapid shifts in user engagement. Then we're gonna hear from Firefly um, and then we're gonna close out with how you can leverage the tech stack. Um, and then at the end, we are going to open it up to Q&A, uh, but feel free to post questions throughout in our Q&A um, field within the webinar uh, console, and then we will address all questions at the end. All right, with that, I would like to turn it over to Courtney. Thanks, Jazz. Um, all right, so I'm going to cover three main areas where we're seeing our customers focus who are experiencing this rapid growth, what they are doing to help manage um, what oftentimes is exponential growth uh, for them. And to start off is onboarding those new users. Um, so that crucial moment when this large group of new users are hitting their application for the first time, what are they doing to make sure that they're making that a seamless uh, experience. And Chaz, if you could hit the next slide. So they're doing several things. So um, one, creating walkthroughs that are specific to specific user groups to help ensure that they're hitting those key areas in their product. Um, and also, you know, anticipating blockers. A, a large portion of their, these new users may not be that, one, they're not that familiar with the platform, Two, maybe they're not that tech savvy. It's a whole new group, a whole new cohort. So they're using our platform to understand where they're getting lost and then displaying some communication to, under, to ensure that they're not getting lost and they are finding value uh, very quickly. The first impression is very critical right now. So we're seeing a, a dramatic spike in using Pendo guides to help facilitate this journey to value. Okay. Next, we're also seeing guidance for specific communications. Um, sorry, Tez, if you go to the next one too. So right now, um, you know, the, the best example, of course, is how are we getting out our COVID-19 message? Um, depending on where you live, it feels like this message, the policy is changing every day, every hour sometimes. So we need the opportunity to be pretty nimble with this communication. So being able to get a message quickly to the user base and also in the right place. Um, you know, probably all of our inboxes are flooded now with 
COVID-19 messages from our, our car insurance provider to, I get it from where I buy my leggings to where I buy my dog's food. Like everyone has this message. So there's a lot of clutter out there. So our customers have really found value in being able to get that message to their customers right in the platform when they're um, actually engaging with us. Um, and then we're also seeing a lot of segmentation with this messaging. So not only, I, I think we'll see with, with Firefly, different groups of within the audience. So it could be like with our e-learning customers, there's, there's a teacher audience, there's a parent audience, there's a student audience. Um, so we need the opportunity to get a message to those different groups but also our customers are using a behavioral targeting. So again, if, if we have a large base um, who's getting lost in our product, let's communicate a message to them based on that behavior to help them you know, be, become a power user and, and just get to the points where they need to within the, the platform. Okay, let's go next. And then this is a huge one too. So with more users comes more support tickets. Um, so we're seeing this with, with a lot of customers. So um, it, the biggest point of this is first understanding, okay, where are people getting lost, right? And then once we know that, putting a message right in front of them, which will hopefully solve that problem right where it's happening and prevent them from contacting our support team, overwhelming our support teams, um, in, in self-serving. Um, so there's that, you know, finding those specific areas in the product. And then we're also seeing a lot of um, enablement of the, their knowledge base within the product. So giving our user, their users a place where they can easily search for information. And again, hopefully cutting down on that strain with the support team. And so with that, Let's get to the good stuff. So I'd like to introduce one of our customers, Firefly Learning. Let me kick it off to Lars and Sam to show us some real life examples. Thanks, Courtney, and uh, thanks for hosting us today. I've actually really been looking forward to this webinar. It is nice to be able to step outside of the busy Corona bubble a bit and just reflect on this pretty crazy week we've gone through. It has not just been crazy for us here at Firefly, of course. My thoughts are really with all the schools out there in the world that are now facing a mammoth challenge and having to find new ways of making all this work. Clearly, the important thing here is student well-being, both short-term and longer term. How do we ensure our children are educated in a world completely upside down to our normal ways of working and thinking about education? One thing is for businesses to get their heads around working from home, a whole different challenge is remote learning at the scale we've currently seen. A key to all of this is, of course, business continuity, which is relevant to so many people in new and challenging ways, whether you're a school, a software business, a hospital, or an airline. Um, so today I'd like to talk about that in light of some of the recent challenges we've been facing here at Firefly and how we're working to ensure Firefly continues to be able to deliver its services to the many schools around the globe we work with and support. Before I dive into the details, let me introduce myself and my colleague Sam. I'm Lars, I'm the head of product at Firefly, and my team looks after everything from early ideas through research and design to product management and product marketing. I'm very fortunate to have a talented team working with me, and I brought one of my colleagues with me today, Sam. She works in a product ops function, which is a new role we created six months ago in response to a need to make better use of data in our decision making. And importantly, ensure we work cross-functionally across the business on data and insights. So everyone is on the same page all the time. Sam is also looking after our ideas capture and community, and she'll tell you about her role later in the presentation. It's safe to say, and I guess that's the gist of our presentation today, that product ops is a key role in any software business. And I strongly urge you to consider making it a formal role in your organization if you haven't already done so. When you hear uh, from Sam, you'll probably find that you are already doing a lot of the things she's owning, but you're perhaps not reaping all the benefits you could if you don't have a clear owner of data, insights, and cross-functional product focus. Next slide, please. For those of you who are not familiar with Firefly, we're a software company originally founded by two secondary students many moons ago. They were frustrated about having to bike down to their school to pick up revision material for their GCSE studies. And they put together a solution that eventually grew into the Firefly many schools around the world use today. 
is widely adopted and we work with schools ranging from state schools, primary and secondary, international schools, schools in Australia, New Zealand, and a range of independent schools around the world, as well as bigger school groups. Firefly's focus has always been on solving the real problems at the core phase in schools, whether that is to help teachers save time, so more time can be spent on teaching and learning, cutting down the admin that far too many schools battle with, helping them get more out of the systems they have already invested in, as these are often operating in, in silos and not well integrated with each other, or by providing them with actionable insights into how their school is operating and help them identify where to focus and support staff. We also ensure that schools can engage parents in whichever way the schools want and prefer, and we're providing students with a structure that helps them evolve into independent learners. As many of you are probably in software business, you'll appreciate the importance of being up and available. So if you didn't know about Firefly before this week, as Chess alluded to, you may have come across this in the news recently. Next slide, please. Mm, yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, this week has been the week where many schools around the world had to close their doors due to the coronavirus. This, of course, meant that they had, fairly, had to fairly quickly adjust on how they run their business of teaching children, providing them with content and engaging them remotely, not to mention uh, figuring out how to solve this with the help of parents. This, of course, also meant that many turned to digital solutions such as Firefly, and we certainly took our share of that load, which led to some disruption and very long days and nights for infrastructure and customer-facing teams. Next slide, please. Just to put things into perspective a bit and illustrate the size of the challenges we've been facing this week just gone. Firefly, uh, so can we go back one, please? Um, one, there seems to be a slide missing. Whether that, uh, oh, sorry, go back one. There we go. Um, Firefly saw a jump in the usage six to seven times that of our normal peak season in September, where many of our schools returned from holiday. This happened overnight, and despite us taking reasonable steps last week in anticipation of increased demand, we quite frankly couldn't spin up hardware fast enough to keep up with it. So unfortunately, we saw two service disruptions and one degraded performance for a pocket of schools as a result. We're deeply sorry about this, but the team is now on top of the spike in usage, and we're humbled by the many stories of thanks we're receiving daily from around the world, where despite the service disruptions, Firefly is the platform school rely on and the schools rely on for their full. Um, fully for their business continuity. We also saw spikes in our support tickets and community engagement, and we'll discuss later how we use Pendus a lot to help with this. Um, our top of funnel metric flow completely out of proportion, and we're trying the best we can to get everybody who needs Firefly access and onboarded. New schools uh, were actually not the cause of the spikes in users we've seen this week, but since we've decided to offer Firefly for free for affected schools until the end of the upcoming terms, we're provisioning for extra usage. Needless to say, it's great to be able to help schools in need, and we're proud to do so. But it does bring with us some interesting challenges around onboarding. So that's another area uh, we expect to make good use of Pendo. Um, we're now faced with the challenge of finding ways to scale this in an efficient way that doesn't compromise quality of service for new schools coming onto platforms where everybody gets a good experience. Next slide, please. So to give you a sense of the scale and the sheer size of the challenge we are facing, here you see our busiest month to date, mainly last September last year, where we set the then new record for Firefly usage. It peaked in the evening of September 9th, and I remember looking at the chart, seeing a, a nice little spike at the time. That spike is, is hardly visible now. Enter Monday, 23rd of March, 2020, and it actually started a bit earlier than that, on Sunday evening in the UK as Australia and Southeast Asia was waking up to a new week. And before this week had really even started, we were breaking usage records uh, from our cluster on that side of the world. In the morning when the UK and Europe woke up to a new reality, with students at home needing access to learning content, everything shot through the roof. At the peak that day, we went from being a fairly niche-sized website to something a lot bigger, and we had to pull out all stops to keep our service operational. Thankfully, we were able to do uh, to get on top of it. But yeah, uh, even with the best intentions and plans, I don't think anyone could have foreseen just how quickly the situation shifted and used escalated. Next slide, please. This, of course, brings me to the salient point around business continuity. What, besides throwing lots of lots of hardware and capacity at the system, have we done and will we be doing going forward to ensure business continuity, not just for Firefly, but certainly also for the schools we support? 
Well, first of all, it's important to say that having Pendo to hand as this is unfolding has really helped. In situations like this, communication is key, and Pendo has been a great way for us to communicate directly, quickly, and effectively with our many users. Sam will show you some examples of this in a minute. We've also relied on Pendo to help us get a deeper understanding of the type of load we were experiencing, so our hardware provisioning could be better targeted at those parts of the system where users were most likely uh, making use of it. We've also seen how Pendo uh, can be used to better guide users into behaviors more friendly to system load. Firefly is a little bit like a Swiss Army knife in that as a school you can get, get the desired outcome in many, many different ways. But the system is designed to be super flexible and adapt to the needs of the user. But this of course also means that the user is in the driving seat and may not realize that by creating learning content in, in one particular way rather than another, makes a big difference to our backend. So we have been using Pendo to nurture users tactically to lessen the load on our service, but also to ensure they get a better user experience. Support is an other interesting area. The support team will see patterns and queries they're getting, and through product ops, we help to provide targeted support for similar users at scale, thus helping them achieve what they need without having to reach out to our support team, which in turn, of course, means our support team sees fewer tickets, and can offer better overall service to other users. Due to unprecedented demand, we have a bit of a mountain to scale uh, onboarding-wise with our many new customers. We're confident though that we can do this at scale with the help of Pendo. We're moving new users onto the platform at a staggering rate at the moment, and Pendo will be a key here to help us onboard new users and ensure they get a great user experience and value out of Firefly. In the past, just to put things in context, when a school takes on a system like Firefly, the process would move a lot slower and involve a lot more change management in the school. For example, making sure staff is, is adequately trained. With Corona, schools now need something that's working across their school yesterday. So it's important that teachers, parents and students are equipped to make use of Firefly and understand how everything fits together. And Pendle Guides will be quite important in helping us achieve that. Lastly, uh, we've seen a search in the need for good, reliable insights, something school leaders need as they get to terms with running and remote operation. We're using Pendle to help them understand how usage is faring across their school, which of course makes it easier for them to provide the level of managerial support needed to manage this difficult remote learning situation. Next slide, please. Pendle is therefore a key partner across all of these areas I've just highlighted, and we're excited to dive deeper into Pendle going forward and make use of some of the more sophisticated features. For example, the ability to hyper-target uh, users and serve uh, them appropriate guides at the appropriate time as they use Firefly. Importantly, and underpinning all of this is, of course, Sam and her product ops role, um, as you really need to make sure everybody in the organization are aligned and coordinated to get the most out of Pendo and to ensure business continuity using data and insights. I'll now hand over to Sam, who will talk about her role and some of the things we've been actively working, working on using Pendo. Over to you, Sam. Thanks, Lars. Uh, next slide. So my work here in Firefly as product ops involves with working with all teams. As Lars mentioned, this week in particular, the role has grown more crucial in to help and relieve other teams' workloads by doing the following. So as uh, the main contact of Pendo, whenever someone in the team has an idea on how we could communicate and provide support to our customers or even improve our own workflows, they would come to me to see what would be best to achieve this. Likewise, if the team wanted a particular data or an, uh, analysis um, on how certain behaviours have changed after communications have been sent out, I analyse the effect within the different systems I look after, how many people have reached, how many clicks have behaviors changed? What could we improve on in the future, etc.? Speaking of communications, our bi weekly cross functional uh, Pendo Guides meetings have now become daily as demands have been changing every day. So, daily Pendo Guides meetings, first thing in the morning, have been important to stay up uh, on top of evolving situations. Including in the 
daily demand. I've been in touch with our uh, infrastructure team to see what features of the uh, Firefly are taken in most impact for our servers and using guides to drive users to explore a wider variety of features as well as providing examples for a more effective workflow. Support and customer success have been stating the most frequently asked questions they are receiving on Zendesk and I've created guides to uh, lift these duplicated queries. And we did a, a two webinars on Wednesday with our marketing team noting down all the questions and feedbacks within the sessions. From this, our cross-functional team is now creating guidance for the best workflows or triggers to help highlight uh, these useful points discussed in Firefly. Um, the following slides show uh, examples of how we've used uh, Pendo to help us through the challenging week that Lars has explained earlier. Next slide, please. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so we've been using paths to see schools user journeys from the dashboard which indicates uh, where users are getting stuck and where they need guidance to push them to get a bigger variety of Firefly. This way our users can be directed to more advanced features of Firefly they may not already know about and it provides a richer experience during this time of need. Next slide. With the learning and uh, customer success teams, we will be keeping a close eye on our newer uh, customers as we will be getting a lot more schools on board in than business as usual. As, as a result of this, we anticipate this to scale back on a more condensed onboarding process and rely on Pendo to identify usage, use, uh, usage patterns and how we can better help new schools get value from Firefly with guides. Next slide. As Lars mentioned earlier, we experienced two service disruptions and one degraded uh, performance this week, which created a surge of support tickets into Zendesk. To ease off the pressure of demand, we created an uptap uptime help yourself guide to our, all of our cloud users directing them to our new status page. This was recognized as very helpful driving users to help themselves and we saw a drop in support tickets following this guide which was released. Next slide. And uh, we also wanted to remind our users of more options of support that we have. So we created this guide and sent it out last week in, pre uh, in preparation. And I have been, an since analysing the effect of uh, this guide, for example, since we released it, new users have been organically signing up to our community forum, which is another uh, system that I look after and our user visits has increased by 51% since. Next slide. Moving forward, our cross-functional team are now planning guides to release next week from all of the feedback we've received. This is one example of how we are pre-planning our ideas, designs, and then we'll go into testing ready for release. With this strategy, anyone from the team can influence it and help us direct our users to a wider variety of virtual learning. Um, Thanks, Anne. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. That was really useful. To end, I just want to highlight how we're working with Pendo to provide school leaders with insights. Just like the benefit from being able to understand user workflows, flows, general usage, and patterns in behavior, so do our schools. Imagine being a school leader who no longer has the ability to walk the corridors of their school to glean what's going on. Clearly there's a need for the school leaders out there to be able to continue their support of their staff and wider school community. Our School Insights product that we have out in beta at the moment provides insights for school leaders using, amongst other things, Pendo data. And what's really great about the Pendo data is that you can pretty much code it as fine as you like. And depending on the school size and the level of activity, you can provide really strong insights for school leaders to help them managed this way um, through this clearly challenging reality they and their schools are facing. 
And that was what we prepared today. Uh, thanks a lot. We hope you, you found this useful. Um, we will take questions in the end, uh, but feel free to reach out to us offline afterwards if you want to learn more about how we operate Pendulet at Firefly. Over to you, Jack. Thank you very much, Lars and Sam. So personally, I think I have got the best job at Pendo. It's um, my job to talk to customers and understand how they use technology like Firefly to develop their product and to maximize customer experience. So I've just got a couple of slides to talk more about technology and how our customers are currently using it. So as you're aware, the digital marketplace is constantly changing. Um, companies like Firefly prove uh, that the future success of their business will depend on the ability to be flexible in these types of scenarios. They've also got to have processes in place, so it's not all about technology. Uh, but what we're seeing is the ability to integrate into the technology stack uh, is uh, into a wide range of best of breed solution makes them very flexible and agile. So it's important when implementing new solutions that you increase the effectiveness of those you're already using. So there's no point installing a new solution like Pendo and it doesn't complement the existing stack that, that you're using and make it maximizing that investment. So what helps us do that is the ability to integrate and trigger events via webhooks uh, helps us to be the center of product operations like Sam has mentioned. So we see so many different types of users in Pendo. We run a, a survey inside the, the software uh, using uh, an in-app message asking what types of roles people are. And the top five are product, as you'd expect, customer success, engineering, UI, UX, and marketing. What we're hearing most from modern product teams is that They've moved from delivering things like features and functions, and you've not really talked, uh, you've not really heard that from Firefly, but to delivering positive business outcomes. So they need to be able to do this at scale and to rapidly accommodate changes in the in the marketplace, as we've seen. So if we look at the technology stack on our next slide, uh, we will see different levels of maturity. So when I'm talking to customers for the first time about their technology. They typically have started somewhere, and that tends to be from homegrown solutions, or they are using some off-the-shelf uh, free uh, analytics tool to get some information. They might be running some surveys, and these tend to be ad hoc. They might be running them by email, and it tends to be a blanket across all their organization. To be more strategic, we're seeing people to be able to segment, so really understand their user, put their user at the forefront, and to do that, you need to pass information back and forth between these technologies so that you can really be, uh, have specific timely in-app messages and notifications like we've seen on, on the COVID-19 messaging. This can also be customized. So we now have customers providing a white glove service for their end users. So what they can do is use messaging and language that is specific to their audience, depending on the type of company they're working with. We then see people using guides for onboarding and gathering feedback. So that's really closing the loop. So how did you find this experience? How was this product launch? Are you satisfied with that service? And then feeding that back into the segmentation to have even more granular focused questions. The people on the top right in terms of the maturity model are those that you will have seen on the last slide that really are using tools like Pendo at the center of their product operations where they've got data pipelines flowing between applications and different data lakes, so they can get that full 360 view of the customer. Uh, what we're seeing now is people are being really transparent with their roadmaps, and given all the information that they know about their customers, they're then replaying that back, uh, having a timeline that they, so customers can see what they've asked for and if it is or isn't being delivered. Um, it, the thing is to ask the question, uh, the, the, the worst thing is not to actually respond. It doesn't matter if it's a negative response, but people want to hear that their, their questions and requests are being heard. What we're going to do in the future uh, is run specific webinars on each of these. Uh, in the meantime, you can email me at john at pendo.io, and we have a link on the next slide uh, to resources. So really my role today was just to introduce you into summarize and to introduce you into what you can find out next. So we're going to open the floor now to questions and I'll hand it back over to Chaz and team.
Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, great content. Really uh, enjoyed the uh, uh, the stories and the, uh, the the best practices. Um, so we've got a couple questions here, and uh, before I hop into the first one, just a reminder to everyone: um, there is a QA button um, at your on your user console, and so if you want to submit additional questions, just click on that, uh, and you can submit them. Um, so the first one uh, is for uh, for Lars and Sam. Um, and basically it's kind of dealing with, uh, your learning. So, you know, based on what you've learned from the current situation, um, if you could plan ahead for an event like this in the future, um, given what you've learned today, what would you do differently? It's, it's a really good question. I think, I mean, it wasn't like we sat last week and, and thought nothing was going to happen this week. So we, we actually took appropriate steps. Uh, last week to to try and scale up uh, our infrastructure. Um, what what was what was really causing the spike for us uh, this week was was a lot of dormant users. So you you will have in your software businesses you have a lot of users that are not very active, um, that may not use your system uh, very often. They they are not very proficient users, and uh, one day they they may decide to uh, to jump on board and, and, and get some value from, from your services. Um, and when they do that, it's really important that you can help them and you can guide them through that experience. And I think if you take the service disruptions aside, which can, which by the way didn't only impact Firefly, um, I think a lot of businesses have sort of a bit of a wake up call on the, on the back end side of things. But if you take that aside and consider what it means to have a dormant user come back into your system, having not been up to speed on your recent product changes. Uh, you know, what's the happy path through your software? Um, what are the three things that you wish that they knew about where they locked on? So a learning for, for us, I believe, is to sort of be more ready with content for dormant users and being able to effectively route them to resources that they need to help themselves. Uh, a big, big part of this is, is around scale. Um, the, the growth we've seen in the past week uh, is, is, is blown up, blown everything out of the water. Um, and and it, there's no real way to scale uh, like that with human to human interaction. Um, so we have to find ways to get people to better content, uh, but be able to find it themselves uh, as, as and when they need it. So that's, that's really been the, the learning for us. So, you know, going forward, we would try and, and make use, good use of Pendo to, to be more hyper-targeted. Um, if we spot a user that's uh, old, new to our system, so an existing dormant user that suddenly pops up, um, that would be a good opportunity to maybe serve them a particular guide that you wouldn't necessarily show a net new customer. Um, so, so there's definitely something, something that we would be looking into. Uh, there's a, another question here. It's almost a follow on to that one, but just um, with these uh, spikes in usage trend um, during the high volume of the last uh, week, was there anything that took you by surprise? I think what took us by surprise was the uh, ferocity of usage. We, 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 at some point, we had several hundred thousands of requests a minute, which is which is a lot for. For, for, for a, a, a you know a, a system like ours that do serve schools all over the, the globe, but they are fairly spread out, and we have a, a number of schools that we work with, and we understand how they 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 tend to use the product on a sort of day by day basis. Uh, Pendle by the way is really helpful to help you understand how these usage patterns play out during the day and. Sad, sad as it is, a lot of teachers are burning in my oil, but if you notice, uh, it's a very uh, challenging uh, trade to be a teacher. Um, and a lot of teachers find themselves using uh, systems and working uh, late into the night. I think the biggest surprise for us was probably that everybody decided to get out of bed at 6.30 in the morning and just have a system. Um, that's something we hadn't seen before, and, and that took us a little bit by surprise. I suspect that we sort of saw a bit of a a similar trend to what we've seen in the supermarket, sadly enough, with sort of a rush to the post. Um, clearly, a lot of schools had to bring up a lot of communication and content very, very quickly. 
to effectively communicate to their uh, students and parents out there. And that was sort of the rush that, that, that really surprised us. Um, we would have been able to keep the system up um, if, if, if schools had sort of reacted in the way that they normally do, even with the extra load. Uh, we would have scaled up our heart rate for sure, but um, you know, we wouldn't be serving up hundreds of thousands of people uh, a minute, uh, which was quite challenging to do. Yeah, I'd like to add to that as well. Um, one thing that I found quite surprising was what areas of Firefly have been the most prominent, especially in this time. Um, so the media use of it. So there's um, adding content like videos and photos and stuff like that um, that have been, I guess, uh, the most popular because you want to have the visuals of uh, learning and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to add on to that, the fact that those kind of areas have been quite popular. I mean, we were lucky in the sense that we uh, have been investing in, but we weren't expecting this situation to work, but we were wrong. But we, we have actually, in the past year or so, invested quite a lot in making our back end stronger. Um, so there are some architectural initiatives we've been pursuing, um, which obviously helps us provision our, our hardware uh, a bit better and, and be more lean and efficient. Um, and cost effective but but these initiatives have clearly helped in this situation I mean, if, it, if this has happened a year ago um, it would have been harder for us to um, to provide the level of service we, we managed to do in the end fantastic um, I'll also uh, add a little bit in there as well um, from a pendo perspective we have uh, been relying heavily on our data analytics team uh, during this time to look at industry trends just across our customers and um, I think as you guys have have pointed out um, we've seen just across usage that educational technology companies um, in general are up um, a very high percentage in week over week um, usage of products and um, <clears throat> you know we'll see we've also seen changes in um, in things like government uh, technology and and hospitality also taking a trend down so as you as you follow um, the trends in the in the marketplace you're also seeing um, changes in trends and usage of those software that probably isn't surprising but um, has definitely been uh, interesting to follow with uh, with actual data um, last one uh, for for Lars and Sam um, how has this experience impacted uh, how you are thinking about what you add next to the platform? It's it's a very good question. Thanks thanks for asking that. I um <laughs> I have been working on a roadmap. We we set out a product strategy back in October, um, and 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 we sort of worked uh, towards a track of, of engaging parents more. I'm, I'm a parent myself, I, and right now I'm experiencing firsthand. <laughs> What if you try and homeschool your your ten year old? Uh, it's a challenge, believe me. Um, but when he when he would come home from school, he would say things like, um, uh, "Hey," and 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 go into his world of of uh, screen time, and you'd be trying to engage and, and and figure out what what occurred in school today. And and oftentimes he'd be like, "I can't remember. Sorry, I can't help you there." So so we we we've seen this is just for me. We've seen across the world, um, particularly in international schools, an increased need to engage. Uh, parents and make parents uh, an active part of, of school life. So our, our pro strategy has, has been focused on that. Um, but when it comes to actually making decisions on the roadmap in terms of what comes next, uh, definitely looking a little bit into the crystal ball and, and, and trying to, to sort of see ahead what, what comes next after a, a coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, clearly things like uh, crisis management and um, being being ready to, to to shift gears as a school uh, becomes uh, more important. So our roadmap has definitely been influenced by uh, by these uh, these ideas. Uh, so you, so instead of uh, focusing more on you know how is the school able to communicate to the parent um, what's occurred in the school today, actually it's very going to go a slightly the other way. And, and how do you as a parent uh, help the school understand uh, the level of engagement of, of the children in a homeschooling situation. Um, of course, we don't expect schools to be 
operating like this uh, for perpetuity, but uh, it, it, it will last for as long as it will. But when schools then come back, um, you know, there, there will be a new reality facing schools. Um, suddenly, the learnings that we are making right now about remote learning and the way that school works and student learn um, will influence how schools operate going forward. I don't see us going back to everything was as it used to be. And this, by the way, is, is, is something we, we believe will happen for, for, for any one of us. Um, we're now finding that actually we can work remotely, we can make this work without having to go to the office every day. So it will also make, make changes for, uh, for, for normal businesses, I suspect, uh, particularly in the, in the software industry. Fantastic. Um, that was uh, really insightful. I also might, uh, might mention a, uh, a module for uh, psychological support for those of us who have become uh, at-home teachers uh, could, be, uh, could be something to invest in as well. Definitely. Well, look, I think that's going to take us to a close. I want to thank everyone for their participation, all of our uh, speakers, especially uh, Sam and Lars from, uh, for, from Firefly. Really appreciate everyone's time. Um, we will be providing uh, this recording out to uh, all of the attendees afterwards. So once again, thanks everyone. And um, uh, uh, Tune in to one of our uh, next webinars coming up around business continuity as well. Thanks.